when you say that, it has a double effect. It's a bittersweet feeling that it's a bittersweet feeling to, to hear that somebody sees your happiness. One, because you, you like the fact that they see you're happy now, but you're embarrassed of the fact that they've always known that you weren't. Damn. That's all I yeah. want to say on that. Yes. Be yes, careful yes. how you say it to somebody because it really says to them, yo, when you were at your lowest, I could see you. Yeah. Yo, it's the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 163. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Um, it's been a busy week, I would say. It's been a it's, definitely yeah. been an eventful week. I hope everybody's feeling good. You know, not under the weather. We getting ready to get out of this summertime weather. We getting into more of the cool I nights. I don't know why people keep saying that. That is not happening. It's about to be warm through Halloween. I'm hoping so, because that's how it was last year. Yeah. We was like, snow coming, snow coming. Hold up. It's a 75 day. With my umbrella. Well, you know, my you know what I was saying? My girl brought a, uh, a big pregnancy coat last year because she was pregnant. Right? Okay, she was yeah. like, by the time winter come, I'm going to need something to put on. Never wore it. Never Because it never got cold enough to wear that joint. Damn. I was well, wearing... I'm, 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 I'm hoping for that. I'm not a yeah, fan of the cold. So, like, I'm mm-hmm. hoping for that. Shout out to my guy right here. He's a, he's a good man right here. Got me some stuff. Just a gift. Uh-huh, yeah. Terrence took care of me on Father's Day. He got me a bunch of shit. And I was like, why did you do this? So uh, they had a drop. So I went ahead, you know, get myself some stuff in the cot. I said, you know what? Let me spin the motherfucking block. <laughs> we talking about the knock y'all. I'm sorry. It's just, he just got me some gym shit. I, it's funny yeah, how you'll yeah. need some shit. You'll be like, damn, I need some whatever. And then somebody just come through with it. And bless you. Yep. And I appreciate that. That's a, that's a pick me up like never before. Mm-hmm. And his little man is a crazy pick me up. Yeah. Terrell can send me a picture of his son. And that's why, I, that's why I was telling people, like, I can't even beef with Terrell the way that I used to. I used to be like, you know, fuck this nigga, Terrell. I mean, but I don't talk to the nigga a couple of days and see how he likes that. <laughs> but if more than however many hours go by, I'm like, uh, I'm trying to see the K-Man. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the golden ticket for sure. Nah, the get out of jail free Yeah, the get out of jail free card with him. For sure. Hey, you know what? What I will say, you know, in meat news, I'm redoing my whole wardrobe. And you know what? I don't know if anybody... Has, has done this or you might have it on your to-do list, but I just had a bunch of shit in my closet that I just was not touching at all. Mm. Like, I mean, stuff that's been on hangers for so long that it's like dust around the collar yeah. because I just was not wearing it. So I said, you know what? I'm about to take all of this shit off, put it all in Goodwill bags. I got a bunch of stuff. What time they close? Goodwill? Can you go up there anytime? And just, do they have like a drop joint or no? They, you, they do have a drop joint, but- Honestly, Terrell, if you want to leave it here, I'll, I'll do it for you. It's a, it, it is a lot. It's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too much. But I'm, I just took a bunch of shit off the hangers, and, I'm, and I went through all of my drawers, all them old pants that I can't think about. I've been doing leg days. Yeah. I got 32, 32s up there. I can't wear no more. Hell yeah. Or, you know, style change. Shit that used to be cool. Them ripped up tight joints. Yeah. I nah. said, I'm never wearing these joints again. Mm. I'm giving them away. Or the biker joints with the with the rib joints. Mm-hmm. I think I'm a, I don't know if I may be able to get back to them joints. Yep. Next is shoes. I'm buying a bunch of shoes because I'm, I'm just trying to redo shit. I, I just started saying, you know what? It was a dude online. It was a young nigga online that was like, you can tell how you can tell a millennial from a Gen Z by the way they wear they something. I forget. And I said, damn. Hope I don't look like an old nigga out this joint. I don't, honestly don't give a fuck. I was looking at that dude. Did you see the dude where they said uh, Playboy Cardi's influence on this generation? He had like the, the dress Oh, yeah. Here, and he was like, everything. What'd he say? Everything that I'm wearing is. He looked insane. You he... look like you think you look sweet, but you look like a bat. Like you look like a nigga that would just be over there. We don't give a fuck what you're wearing. Baggy ass jeans, baggy black black ass, whatever he was wearing. He was saying, oh, yeah, this, he had the Balenciaga ugly ass joints that was whatever. Uh-huh. Bro, you know we won't give a fuck when you walk by most of us. You better hope it's a fashion, fashion group in here because most of us, uh-huh. oh, who's that for? Order, look, order 139. Oh, that's his. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do 138 yet? Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, we're not worried about that. But I was, 
going to say is redoing your closet. Boy, that is a day. It's, that is, is a day. Bo, trust me. For me, it was a couple of weeks. I had shit on the floor for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, it's time for me to... I still have shit to do. I still got to do my shoes. I still got old shoes in it I get, need to get rid of. See? And that, it also is expensive, y'all, because you start realizing, damn, I don't have this. I don't have mm -hmm. that. I was just about to say, you go in there after you do the, the cleaning, and you start feeling like, damn, like I got look like I got robbed or some shit. It looked like somebody took all of my... Oh, look, this all I got? Yeah, you, exactly. I only got four shirts? Shit. <laughs> Bro, that's how I started feeling for yeah. the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my guy, Supermarket Company. My boy just celebrated his uh, whatever birthday. Yeah, shout out. But shout out. I start realizing, damn, you know what? I wore that before last week. I wore that two weeks ago. I'm looking you at old You wore this for the pod? I wore this from the pod before. I feel like I wore this on the pod or a vlog or something. I don't know. This is Shaq, y'all. Parents, don't nobody care yeah. that you got these on the back. Y'all don't know when I was at that bowling alley at the... Uh... When I went to that bowling alley, they were like, we're over here. We're having a discussion about... Is that Shaq on the back of your shirt? They were like, we knew it. I can love Shaq. <laughs> they were spotted, spotted you across the gym. Because we was bowling, so every time I went up there, it's all eyes on me. I'm like, what's going on? But yeah, anyway, uh, week recap. How was your week? You want me to go first? Well, I was, I was saying you had a much more festive week, so I'll go first. All right, bet. We didn't do shit. We stayed in the crib. We uh, My boy turned two months from the six. So he had a two month appointment that gave him four shots. Man, that hurt my soul. It hurt my soul to see that. Because the first one they gave him was the little, you know, the little, it's a liquid joint, liquid yeah. syringe. He got to drink it. He was not fucking with that. Like, why are you giving me this to drink? I'm not, I'm not hungry right now. Get that shit away from me. But we had to, he had to drink it. So he was crying through that. Then when he got that needle, the way he kind of jerked a little bit and cried, oh, you, when your baby look at you like, why is this happening to me? And you can't do shit. And they got two more needles. Yeah. You be wanting to fight the nurse. You're like, get off. How important is this shit? <laughs> but he got his shots. Um, and we went to, where did we go? We went to Firebirds. Got me a smokehouse barbecue burger with tater tots. Woo. I was going to ask you, how is it having a little man there while y'all eating? You know, that's a new thing. Like, it is. Do y'all have them in the in the booth with y'all, or do y'all put them on that little thing on the outside? No, I, I didn't like that wait waiter side thing. I would rather have my baby here. If when he's big enough to like sit up and he's not falling over, then yeah. But we just have the car seat. We put the car seat on the inside of the booth and just open the straps and stuff and sit him up so he can breathe. Yeah. Ever since I saw that video, you saw that video with the gang shooting in the restaurant where yes. they ran and hit the baby. Ever since I saw that video, I said I would never want my baby to sit there. Almost to the point where like if we all go out, I'd rather sit at a table. Yeah. So we could have him right here. Like yeah. we got the joint that you clip to the table and it's it it's uh it supports like 40 pounds. Yeah. Your baby ain't gonna weigh more than 20 pounds after a while, but they can sit in it. So we never gonna do that. Those parents in that video, I just want you to know that they are terrible. The one got under the joint. They start shooting, first of all. Come on. That was fucked up. That's hard to they judge start somebody shooting. Y'all, the baby's sitting like this. Y'all are ducking down. What? Terrell, if you never had bullets flying past your head, you're innate. You're, you, you're just going to automatically just... Terrence, me, you, and, and K sitting in the restaurant. Me, you, and crew right here. Sitting in the restaurant. I'm on this side, you're on that side. He's right here. Somebody starts shooting. My first instinct is going to be to cover him. That's going to be my first instinct. Yours to too. You're not going to look us both lay down and he's just sitting there un undefensible. He can't defend no himself. Way. You can't. I can't. That's how I feel... And I already moved that way. Yeah. I would have spotted these niggas walking in. Yeah. I would have seen them niggas walking in. And that's, I, just, that's just how we was raised. And you know what? And I be out Seattle ahead. moving that same way. Yeah. I'm always looking at the window. I'm always doing this. Even to yeah. the point my girl be like, what are you looking at? I said, look, I'm from PG County. Yes. I'm not from out here. Yeah. <laughs> Anything could happen. You and know? you ever, hey, you ever, and this is something that most black folks can, well, pr probably everybody. I ain't even going to just put it on us. But... You know how you just spot some friction? You mm -hmm. see a nigga saying, but I told you to come back this way. Why the fuck he didn't tell me that? And he said, nah, nigga, because you said, once I see action like that, oh, we about to go ahead and go this way. Mm -hmm. Because I'm about to go ahead and exit. If me and my girl somewhere, whatever, and that's happening, all right, bet we'll do this. Like, I, it, it's the, we could be in the American, uh, best, America's best wings. Two niggas arguing. Bet, well, we gonna wait for our wings in the car. And mm -hmm. then I'm gonna come back solo Get the wings and go back just in case some shit jump off. Because the worst thing, the best thing would be is if some shit jump off, I can get back to the car. Yeah. And I don't have to 
gather my troops. Yeah. Because that make it tougher. And but I you was, can spot that friction. You can spot it. And I was going to say, man, I've been, into, I've been in some toxic relationships. It's worse when you know that you're the friction that was spotted. Ooh. I remember me and my girl was going <laughs> back and forth. And y'all know, I have had to work on this. I used to be a very animated, still, a, still am very animated. But with women, you have to be different, especially when you out in public. Like, I hey. used to do shit like... Let's pause real quick. You got a little something black on your tooth. I was saying, look, I used to be very animated. So with women, you have to be super careful with how you look. Because I used to do stuff like, I used to be real, I used to use my hands a lot. Like, fuck are you talking about? Or, or do you, look, do you hear yourself? Look at this visual though. <laughs> <laughs> I have to stop, I had to learn to stop doing that because it looks away. And I remember I was doing that. And I think I told, I might've said this before. I like looked and I seen this little dude looking at me and his dad kind of looking at me. They were, I, they weren't, they weren't black people, but they were like, you could tell they were like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And I said, okay, that's way more embarrassing mm-hmm. than yeah. anything. So you're right. There are people out there looking for the friction and especially the parents, you know, yeah. especially the, the, the parents. But that was my week. My week was chill. It was, it was chill. You're not watching shit? What, you, what are you watching? He's always watching some new shit. Uh, Terrence gonna be rewatching the Sopranos because I'm because I'm rewatching the Sopranos on, on, on the left, y'all. On the left, you know that means I'm not like let's watch. You know, it's just nah, yeah. But when he told me he was watching, I said, let me put this on. I watched uh, a couple of the little Netflix movies that they put out. They're which, not gonna be my movie suggestions, so I can talk about them. Which one? It's a joint called River. The Wind, uh, not Wind River. Yeah, it's called Wind River or the River Wild or something like that. Wild River. But these motherfuckers is on the on the boat, and one of them is like crazy. No oh, shit. One of the boats, or one of the people on the boat. One of they one of they crew is a friends? nigga that got out of jail, but he's actually crazy as fuck. Okay. <laughs> um. So that was I, right. and um, me and my girl watched Big Brother, which I was not a Big Brother watcher, but that shit is actually dope. Terrell and his girl are on that show, Big Brother. We be watching old seasons of that joint. And I was like, what the fuck is that? I thought that was like a reality show type joint. But it's just like a, it, it is, but it's like games. There's some people that was logged into Big Brother. It's funny. I used to watch the Big Brother fights compilations for some uh-huh. reason, but never watched the show. Terrell would uh, hit me and, uh, and show me his TV. And it's that the TV 14, the 16 by, is it 16 by 9? I don't even know it's what that is. It's the 4 by like, 3. Yeah, when like the, where your TV used to be square. We went to 16 by 9. That's crazy. Anyway. But uh, yeah, you was, you know. More busy than me? Not really, but just had more of an eventful last week. I started the week by going to the Mubadla City Open. It was in D.C. It's, it's the tennis. It's almost like the U.S. Open. The City Open in D.C. Uh, with my dad, and we got to see real tennis players play for, like, the first time ever. That was absolutely dope. Like, it was just me and my dad. Y'all know we play tennis all the time. That's literally my tennis partner. Mm-hmm. And to be out there in the real sense and see the real thing, that was dope as hell. All of the festivities and stuff like that was dope. I'll definitely show y'all that in the vlog because uh, I was definitely vlogging. But straight after that, after we shot the podcast last week, I went to Seattle for Seafair Weekend. That was dope as hell. Um, we don't really have shit like that out in Maryland, like a Seafair Weekend. Or well, if we do, we weren't going, you know? Mm-hmm. What it, but what does that all entail? So, I mean, you get to see, like, the, the biggest part of it is the hydroplane races and the air show. And, and you get to see the Blue Angels. You know, we grew up looking at the, the Blue Angels. Yep. So, well, not, we didn't get to ever see a show, but they used to fly over our house because we used to live by Andrews Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. But the air show and then all of the festivities they had, they had free burgers when, like, when we got there, free Red Robin burger. I said, hold up. I'm about to, I'm about to fuck Can you get double? Up. You can come back if you want, but you really on some petty shit if you get me free again. twice. If you're the person that's walking around the mall trying to get more chicken, more of the toothpick joints, <laughs> mm, I think I need to try it again and see if I want some. Ma'am, no. Go over there and you try it. But they gave you a Red Robin half a burger. Bro, that shit was fire. That's basically a double cheeseburger from McDonald's, basically. Yeah. Shit was perfect. But uh, all of the festivities, all the people, they was really looking forward to it. Believe it or not. If you live in Seattle, you probably know. It definitely rained us out a little bit on Saturday and Sunday, which were some of the bigger days. So I'm glad we, we actually got to get the best part of that weekend 
on Friday. So if you're from Seattle and you are there for Sea Fair weekend, shout out to you. Hey, look, I met the first black firefighter uh, in Seattle. Not big news, but that was dope. He was 90 years old. He came out on his porch to talk to us. And I soaked that up because he just was saying little shit, like shit that he knew. You know, you meet a dude that's 90, he starts saying stuff like, I don't know. Give an example. I'm trying to think of an example, but not. They start saying stuff like, when I was, when I first did this, when I, you know what I mean? I can't really say what he said because I don't really remember uh -huh. everything. And I don't want to say it and be wrong. But I just know I soaked up that moment in meeting. This is the first black firefighter when there was no firefighters. A able to be a firefighter, he was the first black. I said, man, that's dope. And that's he was crazy. a 9-0. And I'm standing on this man's porch, you know? He got uh -huh. his beachfront, beautiful-ass house. If you're from Seattle, you probably know who I'm talking about. Shout out to him. Shout out to y'all. I really kicked it with my girl and her family for real this weekend. That was, that's always great. You know, that's my second fam, so getting yeah. closer with them is just always dope. And her friends. I feel like every time I go out there, I meet... Somebody new? Somebody new or somebody that, of course, have seen me or whatever. So that's always great. Um, just trying to kind of shift in the conversation. Uh, the plane rides that I took this time were so easy. But, man, did I learn some shit But my first plane ride. Oh, okay, yeah. Because you text us on some... I'm never again. I said, maybe he's just feeling it. I was going <laughs> to ask you this, and I'm going to cover my eyes. All right. I want you to rank, uh, I'm going to close it. I want you to rank planes on, uh, seats on a plane from best to worst, aisle seat, middle seat, and window seat. What's best to worst? Best seat is window. Okay. Number one is window because if you want to just go to sleep, you can lean on that wall, and there's nothing like that. Like, and there's no nothing like the security that there's nobody here on this side but me. I just got to worry about this side, my surroundings on this side. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Only bad thing about it is if you need to go to the bathroom, you got to get past two motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. We talking about economy. Uh, economy. That's regular. Regular. Right. Folks. The second best seat is the aisle seat. Okay. Because I can stretch that left leg. Okay. Or that right leg. Depending on what side of the plane I'm sitting on, I can stretch that one leg out and I get a guaranteed arm lean this way or that way. Okay. If you have that. Okay. And you got to be careful because the cart comes down there. You have to tuck that leg in. The worst seat is the middle seat because you just can't lean either way. And if it's, if it's two big motherfuckers next to you, you're stuck. You're stuck. I will say I don't want to have to wait. Did you want pretzels? Because she's coming around with. Me. Yeah, I don't want to be the mediator for both of you niggas. She said Pepsi. Oh, they only have Coke. They Pepsi. only have Coke. And look, she don't hear, so I gotta tap her with her earphones. <laughs> <laughs> it's irritating. Let me give y'all my order. I agree with you. Number one, best seat is the window seat. You are literally one with the plane. Like you are literally one yes. with the plane. Mm -hmm. It is nothing like looking out the window and if you see the wing or. I'm on a plane. Okay, I'm up in the air. Uh -huh. You get security. Everything you said, but that added, that actually helps. Even when you have turbulence. Yeah. Turbulence is the easiest when you're on the window seat. I don't care what you say. The second best seat is the middle seat. Really? The second best seat is the middle seat. The reason why is because you're in the middle. It's like being in the back, you know? Of it's a like car. riding bitch, yeah. It kind of is like riding bitch. But the reason why this is better than the aisle seat is because the aisle seat is the absolute worst seat you can get on a fucking airplane. I'm sorry. Let me guess. You had an aisle seat for this last flight. Did y'all hear what Terrell said? Oh, yeah. I like the aisle seat because I can stick my left leg out. And uh, what I didn't get to say is you get easy access to the bathroom anytime you want to go. You get easy access to the bathroom. The guy that I just flew back from, uh, that, that I flew, flew back from, he sat on the aisle seat. I was so jealous of him because he, could, he would stand up and just stretch. He would stand up and do this. Mm -hmm. Stretch his legs and then you wouldn't get in his seat. If you would have tried to switch, you'd have been like, "No, sir, no, I do that. absolutely not." <laughs> and then he kept thinking that we wasn't going to have anybody sit by by us because it was nobody sitting in between us. I said, uh, "They're coming." Yeah, <laughs> he kept saying, "All right, dude, we, we, we fucking did." Nah, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> They're coming, that motherfucker. Down the middle, from the back. We have a seat right here. Uh -huh. He's like, oh, I, I used to hate when they used to do that. Go ahead though. I don't know where it came from. 
The aisle seat is the worst seat because, like Terrell said, you think you can put that left leg out, but what happens when the cart comes? Or when 50 million people on a six-hour flight from Seattle need to go to the bathroom? Every five minutes, there's somebody coming down the aisle. And Terrell, let me tell you, people do not give a fuck coming down the aisle. You think, did y'all hear also what Terrell said? Oh, yeah, you got the guaranteed lean and Do you? Not when you got this coming by. People, motherfuckers, hips, and... The, every time the dude came down with the cart, he would hit my arm. Every single time, whether it was up here, down here, there was, literally is no way for you to go to sleep. There's no way. And then look, when they come down the aisle, so irritating. So irritating, bringing food up and down the aisle. It is the absolute worst seat. Also, turbulence. You're in the middle of the plane. You're free-balling it, basically. Any nah, type of turbulence? <laughs> What are you holding on to? Not them over there. Not yeah. him. So you just... <laughs> Bro, the worst seat on an airplane is the aisle seat. Easy bathroom access. Who the fuck is really getting up to use the bathroom if you don't have to? Because I use the bathroom before we get on the plane thinking that there's no... I always use the bathroom before thinking there's no bathroom on the plane for some reason. Or I won't even eat. I'm like, oh, I ain't going to eat. I'm not going to do the most. Uh -huh. I got Wendy's right before my flight too. Ooh, did they have breakfast? Nah. I got a classic chicken sandwich with a large fry. Shit was fire. I was on the phone. You know how you be on the phone and somebody's like, hello, hello? And you're like, my bad. <laughs> I was just fucking this sandwich up. <laughs> I was tearing that sandwich up. I got on the plane like, there we go. I got a meal in. You got, a, got up there. Beep, 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 <laughs> Stomach start getting active. I said, oh, no. I got five hours to go. And this just needs to settle. I was going to tell you, I took that. Uh, Terrell got me this stuff called Ivy Guard. Uh, I took one of those on the plane and prayed to God. And it worked, didn't it? It worked. I'm telling you, that it motherfucker worked. worked. That joint settled it my stomach crazy. because, my God, that Wendy's was coming back on me. I started uh -huh. to regret every decision. Uh -huh. Oh, and I almost had friction in the, in the uh, airport. Because me and this girl waiting at the Wendy's. Damn, look, we rapping. I know. <laughs> me and this girl waiting at the Wendy's. And these two girls are ordering. These other two ghetto-ass girls come up there, and they're just standing behind their friend. Right? And I'm like, okay, y'all just with them, you know? Right. Mind you, I was trying to finesse my order on the app. So I was finessing it, but I'm looking at them. And I said, you know what, I'm going to just buy on the app. I hit, I hit the confirm, but I thought you had to stay in line and go up there and say, I got a mobile order. So we all in line. Right when those two girls got done, these other girls, they start pulling their cards out. I'm like, all of us are in line. Y'all think y'all about to just walk up and join your friends and what, y'all about to put orders in? Fuck no. Y'all about to get in the back of this line. Bro, right when I went to be like, right when I, you know how you get the courage yeah. to be like, okay, I'm about to have friction with these young women up in here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, right when I go to say something to do, it was like, order 29 classic sandwich with fries. I was like, y'all just got <laughs> lucky. Because guess what? They definitely cut the line. They definitely were like, um, we want strawberry tea or whatever. I don't give a fuck where y'all came from, bonnets and all. All of y'all would have got served if I was there. I was uh, not rocking at all. And I was about to be late for my flight. Was not rocking. Yeah. The airport is the place where you will 100% lose your cool. Yeah, 100%. You I, can't afford any, any setback. You can't afford you it. You can't afford none. That's why when people be like fighting in the airport or you see people like ah, screaming, that is a real life situation. If you never had your flight canceled or some bullshit where they lose your bag. Remember I, remember I was telling you I was going back and forth with the uh -huh. lady? I told the lady, I said... You have no idea what you're talking about. And now I got everybody like looking at me. And I'm this like, I'm fast. sorry. You had to pull, I had to pull one of these. I normally never do this. He had I, to never get in, <laughs> I never go back and forth with somebody. But you, you don't know uh -huh. it. Anyway, long story less long, y'all. What you would have told them girls? I would have said, excuse me. We've all been waiting in line right here. The line's back here. I know these your friends, but y'all can't cut the line like that. And look. Oh, we, oh, we. Not uh, Look, save it. I'm not going to say nothing to you. I'm going to talk to the, the manager. Ma'am, are you really going to serve them before all of us who have been waiting in line and they're cutting? <laughs> oh, Stitching yeah. like shit. Are you really <laughs> going to serve them? And if she would have looked lost, they would have looked lost. Um, um, well, well, um, well, um, uh -huh. and you know I was still going to make it awkward for y'all. If she if take their order, and let me tell you something. This is what you do because if you work, you, you, did she take their order, yeah. what you do is when you get up there say, I don't want you, I want your manager. I'm getting a free chicken sandwich or something out of this when I get back. Because when I land over in ABQ or whatever you're going, I need to be able to go to that <laughs> Wendy's and get... Hey, bro, let me tell you something. Just a little pin in it. Go to Wendy's for breakfast. The next time you go to that airport, yeah. 
Well, well Wendy's. Or oh, any Wendy's. Because remember, we're not doing that again. I ain't taking medicine on a plane again. Okay. I ain't eating Wendy's before a plane. If you go when it's early, yeah. get Wendy's French toast sticks. It come with wedges. I get the French toast stick meal. It come with wedges and a drink. So you get six French toast sticks, wedges, potato and wedges. Drink. Potato wedges. And they fire. And I get an extra entree. I just say, Give me, let me get another French toast, but not me. or just entree. I eat 12 of them up. Like, Damn, this Woo! nigga racking up calories. It was insane. When I used to go out, I need another syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fire. Anyway, Terrell be giving y'all shit and y'all be going and getting it. That's one thing I know. Today will go. You know how I many niggas you got to go get that endless shrimp with that girl? Yeah. They yeah, say yeah, it. I love that, man. Yeah. I love to see that. And they still got the endless shrimp going if y'all want to go to the Red, Red Lobster. Lobster. And get the endless shrimp. $20. This nigga's going home right now today, girl. You want to move a shrimp? <laughs> <laughs> you want to move a shrimp? Oh, let's pull up to the red light because your girl have no idea. She yeah. don't watch commercials. You go up to that, wasn't an endless shrimp? That. Or you can make a date night out of it. That's what we did. Fellas, you also got girls out there that don't want to go to, they don't want to go to Red Lobster unless some things happen before. Think because of it. Queen Bee. Mm -hmm. Think about it. I just had a baby, right? Yeah. But you know. Y'all spend so much time focused on the baby that you know you got to. So, fellas, just a little tip. Tell you what I did. I said, look, Friday night, right? Yeah. We should go. You know, her mom going to be there. I said, we should go see Oppenheimer. Maybe we go to the steakhouse before. You know, go see what Patsy's is about since that's going to be right by. She was like, okay, yeah. Daylight out of uh -huh. it. Your girl like shit like that. Yeah. If, you, if I would have told her, hey, look, let me go get the endless shrimp again. We right. loved it. Fuck yeah, let's do that. Right. Did you see the girl that was talking about uh, the date? And it was literally like, bruh took her rock climbing for an hour, then breakfast for another hour, then she, then he took her somewhere, then Oppenheimer, and then after Oppenheimer, he took her somewhere? That's too much. It was a load of shit. She was like, why aren't all men like this? Uh, I have never day. planned more than a couple things in a day. Two things. That's the thing. Like, like when see when me and my girl go on vacay, we not the type to do be like, oh, we're gonna do this at this time. We're gonna go this and this. No, we're gonna wake up and we might sleep in, we might make breakfast, but might not. That, that there was people that be talking about the person on the trip that's trying to do everything. Yeah. That's what that remind me of. I ain't trying to do all of that shit. Hell no. You gotta get them ones that are right in the middle. They wanna do stuff, but they don't wanna do everything. And then look, if you wanna take a girl and do all that stuff, cool, but fella, I mean, bro, you you giving away all your Y'all always got some shit going on. <laughs> Niggas moped out there, whatever that is. I ain't even know. But my grandmother came today to see her great grandson for the first time. All, they downstairs. I'm about to go let them in. And they say, it's two people getting locked up out here. So she comes upstairs and she's like, Terrell, what type of stuff y'all got going? I'm like, nothing like this ever, ever happens. happens. I don't know what them niggas did. I don't know what they did, now, granny. Now I look like I live in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you talk to Grady, she's going to say, okay, you know, I ain't coming out with that baby. Yeah, I ain't coming out there to Terrell no more because he got... Yeah. It only take older people one thing to happen for them mm -hmm. to never go back. <laughs> All right. Let's get, let's get off on a, on a good foot. We're going to start with some of the hottest news of the, of the week. Maybe some of the hottest news of the year, I would say, but I'm glad to see this story comes to an end, uh, mm -hmm. regardless of how it ended. Tory Lane sentenced to 10 years uh, in prison for... A number of things with the Meg Thee Stallion situation. Yeah, for sure. She was found guilty of having an unregistered fire, firearm, discharging a firearm with gross negligence, and assault with a semi-automatic firearm. Yep. Uh, he got 10 years. Uh, my question to you was, did you think that was a harsh sentencing, or what do you think about the sentencing now that it, it's come to an end? I never like to see black men go to jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm never going to celebrate that. It was more so like a, I don't feel bad for Tor like, I feel bad for Tory, yeah. but the reason why he's going to jail is his fault. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I more so felt like you was wildin'. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's almost like the same way I felt about Henry Ruggs. I feel bad that you're going to jail, but you killed somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I really sh don't even really feel terrible. Kill somebody and they dog do not count out that fur baby. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and his girlfriend. I didn't know that. Damn, I didn't know that. Didn't his girlfriend die in a crash? I don't, I don't remember. Know. But bottom line is like, I, I never like to see black men go to jail. But like with, specifically with Tory Lanez, the situation just, 
Like, I don't, I didn't like, y'all, and y'all probably have noticed this. We didn't join the whole he did it, he didn't do it movement when that shit was happening with the trial. And we didn't cover any of that trial mm-hmm. on this podcast. We said we're going to wait until the end of it. And when he was found guilty, we still didn't really cover it. Now yeah. that he's going to jail for 10, I mean, it's, it's not as bad as what people think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it is, it is you are about to do 10. He probably would do six with good behavior. But a gun charge like that, you're going you're gonna to do 10 for the strap. You're going to do 10 for the strap. Easy. And then the discharge, discharging with growth, growth negligent, you're going to, you just compound. You actually did good compared to the 30 you could have got. I about to say, yeah. But, Unregistered firearm, that's, yeah. That's, uh, y'all know how that's going to go. Yeah. And then, I mean, feel how you want to feel about, you know, whether he shot Meg or not. She was the one that ended up shot. You the one that fired with gross negligence. I'm not going to come out and say you did or you didn't do it, but. There's people who say he didn't have any DNA or they never found conclusive evidence that he actually shot. Bro, there's, a, there's so many different takes out there. Yeah. And honestly, that's why I said I don't like to see a black man go to jail. I do think you put yourself in this situation where you lost control and so you kind of got to own the result. Remember I told you, like, remember we were talking about how, like, if, you, if I gave my seat up at that game, I take everything that come with it. Yeah. Or if I decide to do so, I got to take everything that come with it. And it's kind of like, I, that's just kind of how I look at it. I don't put too much stock in the, oh, free him, he didn't do, because none of us really know anything, for real. Even after all of the whole trial, because my girl was on that joint, I mean, watch the whole joint. Yeah. And we, there's still doubt on both sides. But and it, but there's, there is people that feel like, you know, how, how can you, y'all be cool with him going to jail if there's still doubt? And for me, it's more so like you got yourself in this situation. You was wilding. You had a strap. Yeah. S- the stra- your strap. You were involved with something it. went off. Yeah. Like, I don't, it is a fucked up situation that I, n- I would never want to be in. I wouldn't want to put nobody in that situation. What I'm not going to do is engage in the Tory Lanez versus Meg Thee Stallion thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I definitely think there are some gaps. There's some holes in the whole thing. I'm not going to say whether he... I'm not going to say the sentence was too harsh, but I am going to say I was surprised that he got 10 years for this. Yeah, I was too. And I think mm-hmm. two things can be mm-hmm. true, y'all. We can... The, sentence can, the sentencing can be a little harsh, and he can still deserve... You know, to Time. be, mm-hmm. you know. How do you feel about the people that say, if it was y'all moms or sisters, y'all would want life? If it was my <laughs> mom or sister, I would talk to her about what really happened. We are unable to talk to Meg the Stallion about what really happened. And Meg the Stallion wasn't even that able to re- recollect what really happened. We got so many different stories. But Meg's, but Meg's story would be that your mom, if your mom was Meg or if your sister was Meg, she would say, he shot me. Imagine... Imagine Candace in a situation like this, but mm-hmm. her friend saying some different shit. You know? It'd be like, Candace, all right, why is she saying this? Nah, yeah. Because that's the, the part we don't know is who was fucking. That's who we really don't know. But that don't matter. None of that matters. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that's why stories start to get That's when messy. shit get muddy. Yeah. Yep. And all of that aside. I don't think Tory is going to do all 10 years. People was like, oh, nah, with this, he is. I don't think he is, y'all. I don't think he's going to do all 10 years. I think he'll do something, what else, something else. So the people that are so butthurt about it, like you said, bro, low-key got off a little easy for this. Because if he wasn't a celeb, same with Henry Ruggs. Henry Ruggs got off easy as fuck. I didn't even, I was so surprised with these two cases. But You kill somebody and get three years? If, That's insane. If the situation is, Tory Lanez, that you shot Meg the Stallion over some petty shit, you need to do every minute of that time that they gave you. Mm-hmm. Only That's how I feel about it, if, if that's really the case. And if they lying on this man, I do think it's bullshit. The system is bullshit. We should be more upset with the situation in the system than we should be with two individuals. We shouldn't aim all of our hate at... Meg the Stallion. I just don't think that... And she wasn't the one. It was the state that... that Sent him to jail. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. of that gun. Because the police that came and did the whatever and said, this is what happened. Now you got to deal with the state. It wasn't like Meg was sitting in the courtroom a- a- across from you. She wasn't. Yeah. That's why I don't want to. I, I ain't got no smoke for Meg the Stallion. I will say Meg the Stallion needs, needs to rap. Come on with the music. 
I will I'm sick say- of sexy red, Glorilla, and Ice Spice. What happened to Meg? She was on top before this shit. Did you see they said, we ain't seen Glorilla since the new sexy red variant? That's very true. Where's she at? <laughs> I mean, you said, I'm not a one-hit wonder. They said they tried to say that I was a one-hit wonder. Okay, you one-hit wonder. You could be a one-hit wonder, You even though you got two tracks. You could still just be a one-year wonder. A it one was year, hot you for one year. Mm-hmm. You gotta keep this shit rolling. This shit is not easy. It's not. It's not easy for her to. It's, it's not gonna be easy for her to make another joint. Especially. She tried it with the the slob on my knob remix joint. You seen that joint? I actually did. It was terrible. It's like stop trying to do this. But she try. She trying still. She she might figure it out. You know what I did want to say about the Tory Lane shit. Um, I don't really have a dog. I don't have a dog in that fight. I don't have a dog because in that to fight. me, I really don't know. I can't swing all the way one. That's why I stayed away from it. And I stick to you You doing the time that, you know, you kind of put yourself in that situation. Yeah. That's, the, that's, that's where I stay. I don't want to make it seem like I'm on, on Meg's side because I really don't have a side. We really don't know. That's, that's why, why I, I say the same thing. That's why we stayed away from it because it's like, I don't really have a side. I mean, but I'm not going to absolve Tori because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can't. You She's can't. saying you shot her. The shit is inconclusive. Y'all went from... I didn't shoot her to, it was her friend that shot her to, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was shot, but then you weren't shot. No, 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 I'm, I, no, I'm talking about Tori. Tori's defense changed so much. Oh, my bad. It made sense for her shit to change so much in the beginning. But in the end, I don't really have a dog in that fight. Um, so far as the Sexy Red Glorilla thing, I don't know. Hey, you see Sexy Red has a sex tape that it just leaked? I'm not watching it. I could easily see a set. I could go on. I, I didn't want to see it, but I saw it. I don't even need to see it. I've seen it. If you're a nigga that has ever watched porn, you've probably seen a sexy red sex tape. You ain't not uh, missing yeah. anything mm-hmm. besides, oh, that's the girl who actually sings uh-huh. Pound Town. This is, no, this uh-huh. is her. This is, this is it. We uh-huh. all seen a joint like sexy red giving it up. Yeah. Have you ever hit a joint like sexy red? Me? Never. I mean, I, never. I don't think Mm-mm. I. Mm-mm. I would never I fuck that somebody that got the piercing right here on top of their lip. Or right here, I would never fuck a, I would never fuck somebody with their lip pierce. Yeah. Right here, I would never. Mm-mm. I don't think I hit a smut like that before. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready to say, chill. I'm sorry. I wouldn't do that. I'm Did sorry. you see what she posted? That's why I said. She whatever. posted. She famous and you got a You looking song, for a on, stud. I got the U. What she said? You, you, That's look, what, you looking for. You got, you got the U. I got the STD. What was wrong with what I just said? If you really think about it. You, perpetu- you you have your whole career where I just watched the interview with her and Yachty, the little clip where she was like, oh, I don't fuck, I don't use condom. I fuck raw. Like, you walk around, you look, ST- I got an S. look, she said STD, you all got I the, need is you. I need you looking for a stud. You got the you, I got the STD or something like that. It was wild. So I'm wrong for calling her a smut? Nah. We got to show respect. Why? Because she made pound town. Fuck it. Hey, but you know, hey, look, I, I feel like. You know, I be on my conspiracy shit. I feel like she is like being pushed for a specific reason and, and, yeah, to yeah. our women. Mm-hmm. I feel like all of the the way that I feel like all of that is done for a reason. I'm past feeling like it's done for a reason, and more so knowing like, the reason. Nah, I just oh. feel like interest. I'm I'm done putting it on the government, and now I'm just putting it on the women of today. I don't even put it on the government. I put it on the or like or the 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 system, the powers that be, the labels, the people that, the people that run the industry. Remember what Leo? Me, we want to talk about uh, Jamie, but the Chinese nigga at your corner store has been selling chicken wings and fries for a reason. Because if all of you niggas decided to go vegan, y'all think he's still gonna be selling the chicken uh, mm-hmm. chicken wings and fries? No, nope. he gonna have a sign up that say cauliflower or, or whatever, but like yeah, they're gonna sell they cauliflower selling wings. to you what you are consuming. And at a certain point, you gotta look at yourself as a consumer. Yeah. Terrence made me stop fucking with Jerry Yums. I used to love Jerry Yums. Go over there, get me a half steak and cheese and fried rice or a half steak and cheese and fries. Man. But I, we said on this podcast a thousand times, I go in there, these motherfuckers not eating that. I've literally seen one of them eating some sushi and I'm like, where the fuck did he get that? Fuck did he get that? They say, I'm going to lunch and they go somewhere else. They're going up to the Szechuan Garden. Uh-huh. They feeding you. What the, yeah, it's like I'm like we used to go to the hip hop fish and chicken. Shout out to everybody in Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple out this way. <laughs> it's a couple out this way. We're not you go in there, they got mac and cheese, greens, fried chicken. <laughs> remember when Ke- remember when Kendrick said uh I almost killed what'd he say? What'd he say on uh Worldwide Stepping? 
He said, I almost, he said, turkey, uh, no, toy drive, something, something, almost killed the, my community. He was like, not because the red and blue flags had red gradient, but because the high blood pressure flooded the catering. The best rap album <laughs> album of last year. The best rap album that of nigga. last year. Hey, but look, that's the truth. The food. I would listen to the joint. That's food. Like, One of these days, I'm going to write these wrongs. Uh, 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 uh. Is that a, I love when you count me? Uh, <laughs> that album, y'all will, gonna, y'all will gonna, go back gonna, and see how great that is. Y'all every will go back you, and see. <laughs> every time you say one line from that, I'm like, Man. ah, I love that. But he was speaking facts. He was. He was. Because we, motherfuckers, if y'all black folks, have y'all thought about how somebody died and then we go to the repast and eat everything that gave them whatever the disease it was that killed them? And we That's be, what Kendrick was talking about. Yeah. I'll never forget uh, who passed away. Somebody passed away. I forget who passed away. I was at the funeral. I hate funerals. But uh, at the repast, at the repast, chicken. we had fried chicken, greens, mash, mac and cheese. It's like, damn, this motherfucker died from cancer. This is the shit right here that's going to cause it. And we just all eating it at the ring, make it out the church. Mm-hmm. We're but, in the basement of the church. The last, you know, I went to, they had Popeye's at the, uh, yeah. What's See, the that's the one lie. That shit's sly. Uh huh. And yeah, you back up there, look, getting more. Hey, look, a Popeye's <laughs> drumstick <laughs> when you starving. Ah, oh, it is a hard. Popeye's drumstick. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I wish I could get a five-piece drumstick at uh right. Popeye. I don't want the wings. I don't want the wings. Give me that like, big give me drumstick. Five drumsticks on some caveman shit. I'll be standing out there right there with one. Real niggas know that the, the the what is it? You know how they say uh flats or drums? Is it drums? Drums or flats? Yeah. Oh, okay. Flats or drums? I am a drum. I would. Oh, I would take drum all drums over flats. Oh, you tripping? Give me that flat. Give me that flat. 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 I, like, I feel like you get more chicken on the drum. Hell no. The opposite. You get more chicken on the flat. Less bone. That fat ass gristle at the top you of the You get so drum. much good chicken on the, on the, on the, what's the name? And you could dip them joints easier. If you fry, if you get wings fried hard, if they accidentally fry your wings hard, which is, you, you will want drums. Yeah. That hard ass drum you try to bite, you don't want that. Then you're going to be burping that motherfucker up all the rest of the day. Burp, and it feel like you're getting real chicken. Let me keep it a hundred. Party wings. You ever had party wings? Yes. You, the ever small get the, ones. you ever get the fucking flat on a party wing? That's no, like, what right. the fuck is this? No, you're right. Party favor. Like, like you this go to the fucking bo- snack. Them bowling alley wings. Yeah, like, like what this the big. Fuck is this? Or the Domino's joints. Yeah, yeah. like I ain't, yeah, whatever. Uh, well, I don't yeah. want no wing that y'all put in the oven. Me neither. You know what I'm saying? You can keep it. Mm-mm. Like Paisano's up there, they got the they got the wings. You could tell they fried them joints. Who be fire? Domino's wings, baked. Okay. Just be soft as shit when you when you bite into it. If you getting wings from the pizza place, you're actually a hungry ass nigga. I'm letting you know that. If you get wings when you get pizza, if you had to get wings, <laughs> you're a hungry ass motherfucker. You need to be stopped. Just eat the pizza. I'm glad you said if you had to get wings, because that is that is honestly when you get wings from the pizza place and the nigga that Domino's right by my house. I always say I can get a pizza, but I need to get a couple wings with it. You no, you didn't. Man. You didn't. Cause look, you'll be eating a pizza and go. Oh, yeah, we got wings. Yeah. You don't even remember. <laughs> Shit, nigga, like me, make a whole plate. Six of them wings, two slices. That's crazy. You eat more than three slices of pizza in one sitting, you're also nuts. I know. And you know what, bro? I could take down a whole medium myself you in one what? sitting. You know what? Never mind. You're right. I could, I could dog a whole pizza. Yeah. On a cheat day? You're just still nuts. Mm-hmm. And you you're know what I'm telling crazy. myself? I got to stop doing this. I be telling myself, why am I acting like I can't get these calories? Why am I acting like this is going to be bad? Because you're getting ready to put a whole load of cheese in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's why I say you're, you're on 10, especially if it's pepperoni. I, I said, said whole pizza. need these games. I feel Your it. boy back in the gym. I love we'll to be see back. it, man. And I'm not. I'm, I've actually been out of the gym. I've been out of commission, y'all. I don't know if y'all look, looked at me the last podcast. I kept doing this. Because the last time I went to the gym, I pushed myself too hard and it ended up. Fucking up some shit in my neck, some shit in my back. Mm-hmm. I, I need uh ass rehab. Mm-hmm. Hit me up, bruh. Oh, you should hit him, bro. I yeah. was about to hit him the other day about uh my knee, cause my I, since I start going back to the gym on my leg, then my knee be ringing, and I'm, I'm like, telling you, I got the stiffness all up here, y'all, and it's got me scared to go back to the gym. I'm losing weight. Let's talk about the uh the boat brawl. I mean, at this point, it's been a week of jokes, a week of coverage. Y'all already know it, mm-hmm. but I know everybody want to know what we think about it. Absolutely. I'll let you go first. Just ask, you, you explain what happened better than I do. I don't even know all of the details of what happened. All I know is that they was jumping this one black dude. These, 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 these a bunch, group of white men 
jump in this one black dude, and you start seeing black folks come from across the everywhere. Coming from the woodwork. Coming from the water. Niggas like the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, basically saved the brother from getting his ass. I mean, the brother from getting, his, getting his ass whooped. I didn't. Do, I don't do all of the research no more. Now I just look and so, if it's something that I need to do research yeah. on, like factually, I look at it. But I enjoy the camaraderie of it. I enjoyed. I was telling Terrence last week. We just talked about Jason Aldean and how they try this in a small town. Try try this in a small town is number one, or was number the number one song in the in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like you just start feeling like you know the racists are getting bold. You know what I'm saying? People are starting getting real bold, and so. To see them, you know, jump in this black dude. Yeah. I said, they probably were listening to that song on their boat. <laughs> they got comfortable. Tried my man. Mm-hmm. And then ended up getting their ass whooped. Black people came out of nowhere. I and I was going to tell Trey, it was absolutely great to see that. Like, because I think about if them black people was not there, they could have right. really did damage to, to, mm-hmm. to whatever. And how would, that abs- how would that look? Right. And he just trying to do his job. Right. And Man. then exactly, and then when they get to talk to the cops before we get to talk to the cops, you already know shit how that goes, goes a certain way. Mm-hmm. And so I love to see that, even though you know we should be more careful, and you know we should be more mindful of you know the law and stuff like that. I just love to see that y'all finally got an ass whooping. It was you know yeah, it was very much. Terrell doesn't agree with my comparison. It was very much do the right thing. Radio Raheem, they burn down Sal's Pizza. Or anytime we go through this. There's always a right and there's always some sort of uh there's always a there's always <laughs> gaps in it. You know what I mean? In the same sense, I feel like I, I love to see us have each other's back. You know? Mm-hmm. I just hope that we are careful going forward with the way that we do stuff because we actually did get kind of lucky this time. The feds that show, showed up was black, you know. Mm-hmm. Cops showed up black. We actually weren't in like a. Well, I guess that is a racist town, huh? Maybe. I don't know. I don't. Really, I don't, I don't really know. know too much, but I, I don't think that we were. You know, we were luckily we luckily outnumbered them in that situation. You know, mm-hmm. like people were calling it a brawl. I was telling Tara, it didn't seem like a brawl. It seemed like fifteen versus like four, and then a couple women. You know, so yeah. brother hit the lady with the chair that that didn't get charged. He lucky. You lucky. He's lucky. He and went crazy. I, like the 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 jokes that we got about the chair is, is is funny, but also I felt a certain type of way about that. Like we shouldn't be applauding a dude hitting a woman over the head with a chair. Like especially defenseless too. She was just sitting there. He goes over and hits her on the head with a chair. Yeah, all right. This reckless. She was acting up first. She not just had even, a moment to sit. Even if, like, I'm not saying that anybody did anything wrong. It's just we need to be careful because, like, we was thinking. Oh, Early yeah. in the week when it happened, we was like, damn, I hope you don't see a bunch of people losing their jobs, going to jail, yeah. doing all of this, even though we love what we're doing. Because the part about do the right thing that they don't show, that they don't see, is the aftermath. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When we act like that, and like I was telling you, we got a big response, a bunch of jokes, it was funny, a bunch of memes, a bunch of all of that, but like... We got to be mindful of what the future look like. Is this always how we're going to treat situations like this? You, you mean know? you mean the response to the ass whooping, not yeah, the, the ass whooping. Not the ass whooping. I mean like the response, you know? I was telling Terrell, my only gripe with this situation, I've, I've said I, that I had a gripe with it because it just seems like we have more jokes than outrage. I feel like we should have all been a little bit more outraged that they really tried to jump this black dude. But instead of outrage, we got a lot of memes, a lot of jokes, even from the people that push, you know what I'm saying, black empowerment and, uh, and people that push, like, for us to get, you know what I'm saying, certain benefits that we don't get. And our black leaders, a lot of them, it's just a lot of jokes. And I'm like, damn, you know what? This is going to end in a joke. And yeah. it feels like this just going to be something that just goes, oh, yeah, I love us. I love how we come together. Do we really come together? We come together. Because if we ca- if we come together, and y'all know I'm gonna give it to y'all straight. I'm not gonna bullshit y'all. I, I, I take all of y'all challenges. We come together. We love to see ourselves come together for shit like this. 
But it's, it sucks when this seems like the only thing that we be coming together for. This or entertainment. And it always ends with entertainment. I told Terrell, we are so much, we're so consumed with entertainment that we, my, this is all I'll say. How do y'all think that everybody else sees the jokes? Do y'all think that we're going to, that it's not going to happen again because we made such a joke about it? You know, we see little shit happen to other races and they get a whole crime hate deal. You know? Yeah. Shit like this, we could probably get our own hate deal, but we got so many jokes that they'll say, oh, you know what? It's not that bad. Not them. I mean, like them. Like the, the people that could say, you know what? I can see why they would need a... Nah, yeah. If the Asians did what the Asians did, they got a whole anti-Asian hate bill from stuff like that. I was a, This person was assaulted. This person was assaulted. They got an anti-Asian hate bill from COVID. They literally got... A couple of attacks that happened because people were thinking that they were responsible for bringing COVID here. And mm -hmm. that it was it's literally called the COVID-19 anti-hate bill. <laughs> so now I sound like your man. But <laughs> <laughs> if something like that can happen for them, I feel like it can happen for us. I just think sometimes our response needs to be with a little bit more. Like thankfully rage, we a little thankfully bit more, we were able to defend ourselves, yeah, but that was bullshit. Right. But versus you got people painting chairs and putting chairs on chains and we talking about chairs and everybody's trying to get a laugh. I'm glad we got the jokes off y'all. It what did we enjoy it? Yeah. The only thing that bothers me is that I don't think that the jokes inspire this to not happen again. I don't think that they're embarrassed by the jokes. I think we're making jokes and that's what it was. And that's all it's going to be. There I even felt the same about the Carly Russell situation with the girl who faked her eye. She faked her kidnapping. We got so many black women that go missing every year, year and there are thousands no, of black we, women that are missing. But Carly Russell fakes it, and people have so many jokes. You know what I'm saying? I even seen somebody say, oh, I want the white woman treatment for her. I want, I want a documentary. I want a TV show. I want, oh, but you don't want, like, where's your outrage? Like, no, yeah. it sounds like you want entertainment. And it's like, yo... We want entertainment until it's time for us to get justice. Then we sit in there pissed off because every time something happened and we could have took it serious mm -hmm. because there was a joke to make, we make the joke. Yeah. You know? And I think, I think more people should be outraged at the Carly Russell situation. Like, yo, she's fucking this up for all of us. We got real black women missing. And you lied? We should be outraged. There was yeah. but more people. And I'm not saying nobody was. No, you're right, though, because there was way more jokes than there was. There was more people tapped in making jokes than when she was originally missing. Right. When she was originally missing, it was a bunch of people, including myself, who didn't know much about it. Oh, but I saw all of the jokes because there was just so much. All of the jokes. So, hey, look, we're not trying I'm to be the you. party poopers, right? Not yet. The Montgomery Boat Brawl situation is a, it's a hilarious situation. The chair aspect is hilarious. Bro, that swam through the ocean. And then rock bottom the dude. Not that yet. dude made me reevaluate my entire physical yep. fucking status right now. I felt like I'd I was been. in fit shape. Mm -hmm. Nah. I'd have been tired as fuck by the time I got there. I was just in that pool at, uh, a couple weeks ago. I swam from one end to the other end. There's no way I could have got out mm -hmm. and fought. You had to stand up halfway? I remember when I got to the edge of the pool. My heart was just beating like, mm -hmm. and I said, damn, that's like I was just running full speed. Swimming is great cardio. It is. Even basketball and boxing, the yeah. sweet science, bro, it is a true stamina game. It is. Like, did you see what Floyd said? Did you see what uh, what's they said about Floyd when he fought Conor McGregor? He just knew Conor McGregor was going to get tired. And he said, I'll probably take him out around, around six or seven. Yep. Did that. I watched Nate. I bet $100 on Nate Diaz. Damn! Lost it. Sheesh! I, I, I don't even know why. I said, I'm just going. I said, I, I was just, I don't know. I think I might have had a glass on I would never bet against Jake Paul because I really I feel like feel it's like, entertainment. Like, maybe. And then they were like, bro, you shouldn't have done that. I was talking to my boy Anthony. He was like, bro, you shouldn't have done that because Nate Diaz about to just go out there for the check. Nate Diaz I said, well, nothing check. I can do now. I thought Nate, I saw the press conference where he, was, where he called him the N-word, which I didn't fuck with. But um, I said, Nate Diaz going to go out there and try to whoop his ass. So everybody voting for Jake. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take the under and vote uh, for Nate Diaz. But I never kept up with the whole... They was like, bro, he going out there for a check. Yeah. And I said, damn, I done fucked myself on 100. And he 100% was out there joint cooling it. Right. 
You got people who will call people who criticize the Montgomery boat brawl situation. You got people who will look at that situation and they'll criticize the people who are critical of the black people in this situation. They want to call you a coon. They want to say that you're you one of them. Even some of our black leaders. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, there's mm. criticism allowed on both sides. And all I'm going to say is when you try to bring up these other races and say, okay, what about when they, what about when they, y'all got to understand that we ain't them. Well, they we got a long have way to go. bills. Yeah. They have laws to protect them. They have these things. We have never been able to move like them. Mm-hmm. We have never been, a- we've always, they've been able to do some shit, but when we do it, it's fairs everywhere. Or, or we get hemmed up. Mm-hmm. We can be mad at the system. We can talk about the system, but also... I just think about what my guy Nipsey Hussle said, R.I.P. I listened to Racks in the Middle this morning. Terrell told you. I, Terrell walked in. I'm just emotional because I'm listening to Racks in the Middle. We the just niggas, embrace the only mm-hmm. life we know. Nah, wow. yeah. And you know what? Oh, no, let me just say mm-hmm. this. One of the best things that man ever said when he was walking on this earth is that we have to be mindful of how we react when we disrespect. Or well, we got to work on our reaction to disrespect. You know? I don't think this reaction wasn't warranted. I think some of the extra stuff is where we start to get in trouble. That's all. That, that's my only crit- criticism. And the, yeah. And I think the, where a lot of it gets lost is, I think, when people come out and say, oh, they should have never beat them people up like that. Then, yeah. yeah then, nah, then, I that's the wrong that. way. But people that's coming out and saying, yo, like, I was, you, I'm, raising, I'm raising a son. You know what I'm saying? I see a bunch of black men out there. I'm thinking about a bunch of fatherhoods being put in the line. If they charge you or if, if you go out there and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I understand we was protecting my, my guy. But once we got him safe, that's when we, we should have retreated. Yeah. We shouldn't be trying to, not because we shouldn't do it, but because we got to think smarter about the situation and how it will play out for yeah. both of us in the law. Because you don't have no control over anything but this situation. Once you stand in front of that judge, understand that he might put on this coat tonight, but he might put on a different coat, you know what I'm saying, and, yeah. and, and throw the book at you. So you got to be careful. Look at Tory Lanez. You just got 10 years for this situation that who's responsible for it but you. Right. And look, can you point fingers and say, oh, but it was started here. Oh, but he started. I told her He started it. She started it. That's never going to get you out of mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Issues with the law. It's never going to save you. That will not save you. So we th- we just thinking smart, y'all. We not party pooping. Not we just saying, sure. yo, we had the fun. I would have 100% jumped in. But once we got bruh safe, I'm not about to be hawking them down on a boat. I'm not running after you. I'm not mm-hmm. hitting people with chairs. I'm the type of dude that's trying to break it up, you know? And then you catch a right. And then I catch a right, and then you say, I'm trying to break it up. <laughs> now you <laughs> yeah, yeah, you fight. I've seen that happen but, a million times. Yeah. I would have definitely hopped in. I would have definitely saved my guy for 100%. But once we got him to... Sa- I would have been trying to save him. Like, I'm not trying to jump in and whoop no white ass. Yeah. And we're not trying to find Not because I don't want to. Right. We're not the, the law, y'all. We are not... We can't go up to the bone and say, did you just beat his ass? Oh, well, I'm about to beat your ass. That's, That's where we get in trouble. Because mm-hmm, them motherfuckers... It that might own feel the good to do, but... They own them boats. They're going to press charges. Them motherfuckers. Thankfully, none of the black folks was charged that, I, Thankfully. that I've seen so far. So far. But yeah. But crazy situation. Shout out to everybody who felt like it was a W for the black community. If you felt like it was a W for the black community, I mean, hey. It was definitely a was, W. I can say we could These put These motherfuckers w. was talking about, try that in a small town. Did you see that motherfucker at his concert? They're, they're calling me all sorts of things, but guess what? I love this country, and I want to protect this country, and I want to protect everybody that I love, my family. All right, bet. Yeah. And they was flooding his ass with them Mm -hmm. joints. And look, Donald Trump is on his way back. I just watched his Make America Great Again little something press. That joint says, Make America Great Again 2024. That The fact that he could even run is crazy, but... Not yet. We know what he brings. He brings this unreal, raw racism confidence... Mm-hmm. And these white folks that gave him the confidence that I think breathe stuff like them saying, fuck it, we're going to jump this black dude. For what? Yep. No way it was that cool at all. And I'm glad that most of them got their ass whooped. Bro- I am glad about that. I don't want, I don't want that message to get mis- misconstrued. Yeah. But bro, DeSantis is like equally, if not worse, bad. This like, we don't need either of them. DeSantis? Oh, wait, look. Oh, wait. Who else we got? 
That dude is terrible, bro. What happened to Kamala? Ain't, ain't you supposed to be doing your Hillary? <laughs> and going that? What the fuck? She's running with Joe again. They get, and look, they getting concerned because guess what? They this said nigga we, Joe Biden has no idea what's going on. He doesn't. I don't even know what's going on in Montgomery. And you got things going on in Texas. <laughs> and you got things going on with Tory Lanez and shooting Meg the Stallion. Huh? <laughs> what did you know, he say? He, you know, he concerned about the black male voter, voter turnout. He should be. He said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. And then proceeded to do absolutely nothing for you niggas that went out and did it. Eva Pigford was sitting up there in tears. Go, Joe! Crying! Did nothing for your ass! But you know what we did get? We got an anti-Asian hate bill crime. We got the Native American Pacific Islander uh, hate uh, crime bill or whatever assistance bill. They got that. Not All you get... But we dope, need to get shit. dope, dope that y'all got a specific bill. Yeah, and look, for my people who might be of a different race and, and you might not like hearing, oh, but we needed that. It is totally fine. Just imagine Joe Biden said, if you Asian, you ain't, if you ain't, if you Asian and you don't vote for me, then you ain't Asian. What? And then proceed to take, care, proceed everybody to take care of everybody else around you. Look, he didn't say that. <laughs> he said nothing about uh, everybody else. Uh-huh. Why did you have to say that about if you don't, then you ain't black. You yep. ain't black. We know what you mm-hmm. was doing. And let me tell you, Kamala did probably the best executed job of acting of like bamboozling everybody that yep. I've ever seen. She was at HBCUs walking with AKAs. She was eating chicken off trucks. She was saying, Oh, I'm a black woman and I'm all I know all about being bro. She swindled everybody, first of all. Because she said, <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Check my birth certificate. There's others on there. <laughs> Native American. <laughs> what is the other one? <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> She's everything but. And she even came out and said, uh, yeah, I'm not even fully that. I'm, do y'all see what we talk it's about? It's all good. It's all good. You see what it's we talk about? It's cool, Kamala, because when you was dancing uh, Mary J, you was black. Uh-huh. I remember that. Oh, but now you're not black. Do you see what she going to the Beyonce concert with her hubby? Uh-huh. I seen that. Turn around, everybody on mute. First of all, shout out to everybody in DC. Was the best mute turnout. It was a bunch of people that I followed that I did not know even. If I would have went, I would have seen a ton of people I knew. Yeah, I thought I was gonna see more people I knew at the Drake concert. Mm -mm, Beyonce, that Beyonce joint brought everybody out. I mean, girls, niggas with their girl. Um, But anyway, shout out to DC. They smoked it. Beyonce came out in the rain, paid a hundred racks to keep the met the DC Metro open because she knew she had took she had delayed in an hour. So she paid a hundred racks to DC to keep the metro open. A real one. A Y'all n- ghosts don't do that. A nice tax write-off. It's a business expense. But I didn't have to do it. Y'all could have looked at the When, when black celebrities ass do stuff like that, I'm like, oh, that's a nice tax write-off. Uh-huh, B. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How much? Just do it. We did it, Joe. But what they really do? Say the TED talk. Hand on the talk. It's time to set it off. What is what is that from? Is that Kanye? That is Kanye, but that's uh money on stage, money like sage in my house, keep it burning. City on fire. He took a shot at Kamala Harris when he said that. We did it, Joe. Is that what he said? You never heard that Kanye West live before? I listen to that motherfucker for real. He said, <laughs> We did it, Joe, but what they really do. You never heard that? <laughs> what? That's crazy. Look, earlier in the week. And this is something that we, we're not really going to talk about what happened, but more so the situation. Kai Sennett incited a riot. He's a Twitch streamer, one of the biggest Twitch streamers ever. He incited mm-hmm. a riot in New York. I think a couple people might have passed away. I, don't I mean, there's it. people who were jumping on cars and all of that. And what I was really going to talk about is how when you get to a certain level, you can't do the same ground level things that yeah. you used to do. You know? Max. I think any artist that might have set up a... Uh, a meet and greet, or I think in this case, he was giving away some PS5s. Any artist that does that has the opportunity to incite a riot without, with mismanagement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's on some, yo, everybody meet me out, out here. Are you forgetting that you're the biggest Twitch streamer yeah, ever? Yeah, you cannot do that. You can't be like, oh, bet y'all, hey, I'm about to be right here at Towns. And you know what? The uh, That's the thing. The police came out and said, he called us four hours in advance. But that's nowhere near enough. Yeah. They said we ran out of motherfuckers to help. Yeah, we can't just... And look, you have to get a big... You have to get, I think, a permit or some, some yep. real shit. Me and Terrell could say, Hey, y'all, we're about to have the Relis 9 meet up at the mall over here. Or we're going to meet up over here. 
And I I don't think that it will be thousands on top of thousands of people yeah. showing up. Even though yeah. the nine is real. Nine is but, strong, but it ain't, it ain't I don't that think strong. it ain't that strong. This motherfucker know? just crossed, what, 100,000 subs. That's not even compared to all the motherfuckers watching. Yeah, no. So that's what I'm saying. On that level, just a, my only opinion on that is damn, one. And two, you just got to be careful with what you do now. And it's funny because this is going to be a learning moment for him for sure. Yeah. This is going to let him know, all right, bet. I'm, I'm really up there now. And he I, has all of his relatability still. You know, he still seems like the regular guy, even though he be in design all the time. Yeah. And I, but, and, and yeah. He, and he did he, uh, a stream. I don't know if you've seen that little clip of his stream where he was talking about how his fans need to chill or oh, whatever. But, like, I think the biggest thing out of that was your team. Your team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's your team. Your team got to hold you down in that situation. Like, you don't have a publicist. You don't have a somebody... Like you making good, you making that money at that level. You gotta be careful because it's the second thing that you done ran into when it comes to you throwing an event or you being at an event. Yeah. Like the girl that said she was, you know, sexually assaulted at his party or whatever, and he told she told him and he didn't do anything and he had to go out on that that big. Yeah. That was a big situation. Just like yo, you gotta have a better protection behind you in the form of a like a publicist. Yvette would never let that happen to Beyonce. You never. know what I'm saying? Never. never. Just because of the optic. Yeah. That, people underestimate how much publicists do. They're not just thinking about your image. They're thinking, oh, how are you going to do this? Because if this goes wrong, you. Yeah. Or the that, assistance and all that in your life, yes. they are there for a reason. I'm telling you. So just wanted to say that was all we had on that. Not really getting too deep into that. Doja Cat had some comments about, she was talking about her fan base. And she was talking about fan culture. And I said, damn, she probably strike a chord. Go, make sure you go to your listening. Because I don't think you ever hit stop on the, uh, the pod joint. I just turned it down. Oh, I'm not going. Is she right, coming Here home? goes Doja. You're an idiot. I don't care if you like my music or not. There's a lot of people I don't like who I fucking listen to their music and shit. And there's a lot of people I don't know that I listen to their music and shit. And if I knew them, I probably wouldn't fucking like them. I listen to a lot of music. And there's no way I would be best friends with every fucking person that I listen to their fucking music. Do you understand? Like, not trying to be, like, aggressive towards you, but, like, I am because I'm upset with you. But, like, do you understand what I'm saying amongst all the anger? Like, you're such a fucking idiot. I'm not your friend. I make fucking music and you like it. And if you don't, cool, great. I don't give a shit. I'm not doing it so that you like me. I'm doing it because it's fun. Yeah. Now fucking hop off my cock, you Philistine piece of shit. No one fucking cares. As Doja. Now, let me tell you something. Um, that's kind of like a tough thing to hear, but I'm not going to lie. When Doja said that, I kind of like understood it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understood. Damn, did I get that did right? Yeah. I, I kind of understood what she was saying because it's kind of like fan culture can be a little overwhelming and not everybody wants to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I will say is you kind of, you got to understand what you signed up for. Like, if something happens, like, you and you and I know this, like, just ever, just be, even with the small following that we have, there's certain things that you kind of obligated to either do or speak on, or, or it's fucked up. Yeah. When Takeoff passed away, we had just did only built for Infinity Links mm -hmm. on the Patreon. We're not, we can't put that out. We, when Nipsey passed away, we stopped, we didn't put anything out for a couple weeks. Yeah. That was so heavy that it's like, you know what? I got to respect. We ended up doing a victory lap flashback, higher music video re, uh, review. We did the God Did joint, but th but even those was like they way had Nipsey on it. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you fuck around, if you, you know what I'm saying? You just, it's certain things you got to buy by. If somebody pass away and you tweet, yo, I'm chilling today, people going to be like, you're not going to say nothing about such and such. Yeah. So there are certain things you sign up for when you become famous. But one thing you don't really sign up for is having to give so much of your life to these fans. Like, her, the, I think the biggest thing she said for me was, well, I'm not your fucking friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know I, you know I resonate with stuff. Even like what you just said about how when somebody passes away and they say, wow, you're not going to say anything about this. When you really think about it, that is something that you say to a friend. Yeah. You don't know this person. To tell them how they should react, but you think because you're a fan of their music, you can say certain shit to them. I think one person said under here, 
The only thing that they didn't like about what she said was her delivery. But yeah. other than that, it is the ugly truth about these celebrities and what and how they are. Y'all think Beyonce don't really feel like this? Rihanna, look at how they Drake. Move. They, I, they, they, I, I love their music, but they really do not give a fuck about us. And it's nothing wrong with that because if I was them, I wouldn't give a fuck. You know? Because mm-hmm. you can't. All of you sit on there and will retweet. I don't give a fuck about it. No, I don't give a fuck. I only worry about my circle. Look, keep your circle small. Keep your circle tight. Get rid of toxic people in your life. So you are already moving in your life in a way where it's like mm-hmm. you're selective with the people you're around. Just because you make something that everybody likes, that doesn't mean that you have to abide by everyone's interests and, and you have to respond to everything and all of that. And you have to live your life to appease these people because they like your music. Right. And I ain't going to lie. Doja Cat been on some bullshit a little bit lately. I mean, she's with that dude that had all of those things come out about him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know yep. it's, whether it's true or not, but that didn't look good. And did you see her paint the town red? That joint was wild. Video? Yeah. But you know what? I don't give into all of the. I I can. I, I was. I have thoughts on that video too. That I think is. I think it's. I think it's done on purpose. I think that is 100%. done on purpose. Not trying to be. And that's the thing. It was. It's talking. not Jay Z on to the next one video. No. Yeah. See, back in the day, you had to look for the signs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people don't like Sam Smith's unholy video, but the performance or whatever he was at was ridiculous. Red everywhere. Red everywhere. And you know they doing that shit on purpose. And honestly, if I was LGBTQ, and I went 25 years with y'all telling me I was going to hell, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For my lifestyle, I would. Love this shit. I would love all of the horns and shit because fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, re- I won't have to respect you. You told me I was going to hell for years for my sin when y'all motherfuckers sin every day. You know what I'm saying? So now you. I'm about to, that's why I love the Lord. Like I'm at the, I'm at the, I don't know what he said. I'm at the body shop. I'm doing something unholy. I love it. I love that. So I love that track because of what it represents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those you're doing this shit is, it's clearly like I'm about to just piss everybody off and make everybody talk. Same thing that Lil Nas X did. When he was sliding down the pole and was uh-huh. giving the devil a lap dance. Now, you they see, trying to do it. They're trying to have that crazy moment. And now exactly. people are not really giving a fuck for real. Yeah. People weren't so upset about that video. It's just like, wow. You know? Nah, people was definitely... Are you talking about this one? About... Well, not as much as you would normally see. Yeah, not as much as you, you would normally see. Sometimes it's a little far. Yeah. But it's not unwarranted because of the what came with it. It's not. And like what she said about I'm not your friend, stuff like that. That's what y'all have to keep in mind with some of these artists. They are literally just artists. Yeah. You know? I don't give a fuck about anything normally except the art. You know? And you know how I am. We're not really supposed to know certain things that we want to now know. Because we, me and Terrell... The way we grew up earlier, you really did not see these celebrities at all. Do you remember back in the day, we didn't have Instagram and Twitter to see them all the time. You didn't. Like, they needed to show up at the BET, the MTV Awards to be seen. They needed to show up to these red carpets to be seen. And like, Mm -hmm. now, they don't give a fuck. Y'all think that Jay-Z really gives a fuck about what y'all think? No. And these young artists, they really don't. They They don't. They don't give a fuck. This is almost like the glitch in the system where you said some shit you wasn't supposed to say because we all feel that way, but you went out there and said it. You went out there and said it, yeah. You all know? these people that had fan bases. Yeah. Remember when Nicki Minaj was outside? She was like, I'm going to go. 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 And because I, have this, some, I have a conspiracy about Nicki Minaj. I feel like she does not give a fuck about her fans I know, I be for feeling, real. I, but you know she, what? Be looking irritated as fuck. That's what I was getting ready to say. She be looking irritated. Beyonce was out there and then people was screaming and she was looking at them. And it's like, but you know what? You can never. There is a certain level of it though. You never know what your music, you know, Nicki might done. have a song that I wish that I could have this moment for life. That song, I I have seen people get the best news of their life and put that song on the story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce has tracks that could have changed somebody's life. You never know. How big a fan is. That's why it is kind of like a, we not your friend, but I do fuck with you heavy. Like, the people that I watch their podcast all day, like I'm listening to Joe Button for 13 years, 14 years. Yeah. I disagree with 90% of what he says, but I feel like that's like an older cousin that I got. Oh, what he's saying this week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're, I'm not your friend, but I am a fan. Same thing the way I feel with 
like J. Cole, Drake, Jay-Z, the Beyonce. I look at Beyonce like a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not your friend, but I fucking, yeah. What are you doing with your day? You know what I'm saying? I can only respond to what you do. I can't tell you to do anything. Not yet. Like, I wouldn't, like, there's people that tell me and Terrell that they don't want us to do certain shit. They don't want us to talk about certain shit. Oh, mm. y'all niggas don't do this. Oh, y'all don't do that. And it's like, hand me that water jug. You're not going to be able to. Oh, my man, get in some water. Hold on, let me pour it for you. <laughs> you press Before it. I continue, what do you say? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you go look for it. But it's, it's definitely one of those things where I don't expect these artists to be on a friendly level or whatever, like. If I were to see an artist out in public, I wouldn't be the type of guy that says, oh, let me get an autograph or, oh my God, can I get a picture? I'm not the type of fan like that. But I have people all the time that come up to me that I might see and be like, yo, can I get a pic? And I'm always with it. Yeah, you know? me too. Yeah. Because I'm not even, who the fuck am I? You want a picture with me? Cool. Nah, yeah. But I understand both sides of this Doja Cat situation. She's saying a very ugly truth. Like, I'm not your fucking friend. I'm not. I, I just make music. And that comes I get with the, that. But that comes with the frustration of your fan base. Think about, like, Rihanna. And Rihanna has to deal with everybody saying, where's that album? Where are you going to album? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the same way, remember we were talking about how Cardi never dropped uh, another album after she put the first one out? Mm-hmm. If I'm Rihanna, I'm not putting out another album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to give you that just because you want that. Because if the album's not perfect, now I got to deal with being called mid and trash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kendrick didn't put out music for five years. Niggas begged for music for five years. Heart Part 5 came. They loved it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody mm -hmm. loved it. But the moment you don't like something, now, oh, that album was this. It was, oh, it only did this. You know what I'm saying? J. Cole went through the same thing. Yeah. And it's kind of like, damn, you know what? How about I just take care of myself? I, J. Cole, I was watching the For Your Eyes um, documentary that yeah. he has. No, I was actually watching the off-season documentary that he has out. He was talking about how he made certain tracks. Yeah. And he was like, when the baby came, I was like, this is crazy. So I ended up having to move all my shit. And I'm like, this nigga has a kid that we have never, ever seen. I don't yeah. even know how old he is. Kendrick got two kids we never see. Except on that cover. We've seen bit. one of Beyonce's twins. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The boy we never see. And... Rihanna gives us what she wants. You know, I, that's why, I, you know, how I, you know, how I, I agree with Doja because I've taken a page out of kind of that book where it's like, I'm going to limit how much of my real life I put out there because then all of that shit is subject to you being judged. And, and, don't, and don't, don't forget that Doja Cat was talking about switching her sound. And that kind of, uh -huh. that will also let you know how real your fans are because even with Rihanna, she probably meets people. That says, oh, yeah, well, you uh, whatever. I know girls who say, fuck Rihanna, because she ain't putting music out. They were such big musical mm -hmm. fans. But you got to ask yourself, are you really a Rihanna fan, or are you just a fan of Rihanna music? That's why Doja Cat saying, I make music. It's like, there are some people who are just fans of that. There are some people who do not give a fuck about this podcast that me and Terrell do, but they will watch all the reaction videos, you know? Yeah. Because... They're not a fan of the Mallory Bros. They're a fan of Mallory Bros reactions. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But you got to understand that we're looking at that. You know, we know the fans that show up for that. Oh, they fuck with this. They fuck with that. They fucking with everything we do. We do look at that person as more of a fan than the ones that's like, man, fuck this. Y'all need to do that. Or, oh, fuck that. I'm not <laughs> fucking with that. Or, I don't fuck with that. It's nothing wrong with having your preference. But artists see all of it. Rihanna hears the people that say, where's that album? Or where's that album? And she knows, okay, well, I'm doing Savage Fenty, and I'm a billionaire because of it. And if you don't give a fuck about that, cool. But yeah, I'm looking at you like, okay, you are a fan of the music you're I make. You're a fan of what I do. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that is something that artists need to remember. Yeah. Is that Same with these football players. Yes. Yeah. You know? Like, you see all the people lined up across the street while Brian was eating? Bro, Yes. And it's like, but but you see, a lot of it come with it though, and that's the thing that yeah, we can't yeah, yeah. we can't miss that. A lot of it come with the game. You wanted to be famous, yeah. You know what I'm saying you wanted to blow up. This is fame. That's why people say I want the money, not the fame. You know what I'm saying? I want y'all can keep the fame. I just want the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they seen what fame can do. And that should have dropped you crazy. That's why I like people are like. What did J Cole say when he was talking about how he wish he could go back? He got a couple songs. He was talking about how like. 
Which yeah. I can go back and not do whatever. He could go back and be like a regular person because sometimes the shit is probably like, damn, even you. I can't listen to music when I want. I got to wait and listen to it on camera for y'all motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. And I love to do it. I've been doing it forever. He should be a 90. He should be a 90. That's bullshit. Um, you see Wimby Yama's at 84? 84? That, that come oh. with the hype. That come with the hype. What was Zion when Zion came out? I don't even know. talking about Jamal, Jamal um, Murray. Should be a 90 to me. I wish they would stop putting out fucking ratings and pictures and, oh, this is the first look at this person. Who gives a fuck? Show the gameplay. Talking about The play. game come out in a month. Nah, it does. No gameplay yet? We haven't seen any gameplay. We just keep seeing niggas upload 2K23 saying that it's 24. It's not. You ain't going to be one of the niggas get the beta? Send Ronnie 2K your favorite 2K of all time. Buy an orange soda from the store. Send me your Twitter name underneath. You know how they be doing that just to get the beta? The Madden beta. When does Madden come out? I'm getting that Madden. Look at Young Thug in court. Did you see that joint? Did you see the dude that said yeah, a little size on him? You see the dude that said the TL going to light up when they announced Thug got the life, life sentence. sentence. Yeah, I saw that. I said, damn, that could happen. So I don't know if y'all seen uh, Billy Porter, but it came out. Let me get back to it. Billy Porter reveals that he lives check to check and has to sell his house as a result of the Hollywood strikes. Right. Wow. Y'all know Billy Porter. He's in Pose. He won Emmys. He's the black dude that always has on like a dress or some crazy gown. Mm -hmm. Um. But he put, I was supposed to be in a new movie and on a new television show starting in September, but none of that is happening. So he has to sell his house. And only reason why I put this on here is because the response was, mm, he must have been living outside his meme. Uh, you see, these celebrities go and they spend all this money up and then they don't can't have a job. Yeah. I understand that to a certain... I get it, but no. This is what y'all need to understand. These actors have been underpaid long before the strike happened. Billy Porter it was affected by the wages. He was a part of the people that were waiting for this new agreement to come in August that didn't happen. So he was already living check to check. He was already not being compensated correctly for what he was making. So they strike. You're going to have to make some shit shake or you're going to have to sell your house. It's not that he went out and bought this house that he can't afford. You live in something right now. And if for some reason we garnish your wages for the next two months, you're going to have to do something different. Yeah. It would be fucked up if I said, oh, you probably shouldn't have got that apartment or you probably shouldn't have got that. Nah, because I was straight. Yeah. This was... should not be the take. Yeah. That's coming from people who aren't affected by or aren't involved, you know? Yeah. Nah, it just, yeah. And to me, it just goes to show how we just, remember what we said? You, want, you don't want to see people stay up at the top. That's how people are. People so fucking judgy. Yeah. Like, y'all now are going to the point of saying, oh, you see, this is why you don't buy outside your means. Nobody said he did that. Yeah. Do you not know about the strike that's happening and why they're striking? Look, damn, they have been striking for two weeks and you already got to sell your house? Nigga, do you know that he was already living check to check before the strike? Right. I was looking for that next movie before the strike. And that is the life of an actor or entertainer like that. You, you are living... You are living on what you've done and what you do next. And you know what, bro? Only reason why I really want to bring this up is because it's kind of like, if you don't know about the, the industry, just shut the fuck up with your opinion. You don't have to comment on every single thing. But now we live in a time where everybody has to comment on everything, whether you know about it or not. Facts. Like, you don't know about this industry or why they're striking. You just want to come on here and judge. Shut the fuck up. I hear Sorry. that. That's it. That's all I have for Billy Porter. One thing I did want to uh, come on here and talk about is... When you hear people say this, or if you yourself say this, the, the, the phrase or the term, you look so happy. If you've ever moved out of a situation that you was in, or out of an old relationship, or you could have been in a bad relationship or a bad situation at a job somewhere, you might have heard that before once you finally got out of it. You know, I'm in a new relationship now, and I was in a relationship before that I felt like, just wasn't healthy, you know? And it was very visible when you see me. If you was around me, you kind of knew I was a lot more whatever. Like, in a new relationship, you'll have a lot of people tell you, you look so happy. Or you look, oh, you look happier. Y'all have to understand that the person that hears that isn't hearing it like how you're saying it. It's a nice thing for you to say, but also it could be very... Cryptic. It could be very 
dark to hear that. Only because the person that hears that, they think that they look happy all the time. Mm -hmm. You go in your parents' house and you pissed off or you whatever, your, your friends and family call you and, and you do your best to hold it together for them. And when they walk away, you have that little period where you're like, all right, like, I actually kept it together there. Yeah. Even if you cry or you get in your feelings after, I've had, I've been arguing my, in my truck right when I put it to my parents' house. And I've literally had a face and I saw, I would see my dad and I would fix my face. And I would swear he didn't see it. I, I, Terrell is my, I know you know. I've, I've known you since we was flesh and wound. When we, I know you since we was both ambivocal corded up. I, I can I know I know one hundred percent when Terrence was just in an argument. You can't hide it from me. He does a good job holding it together for uh everybody else podcast and everybody else. Yeah, uh -huh. but when somebody like Terrell or somebody like my parents or somebody like some, a close friend of mine says, "Oh, you know, you look so happy." It reminds me of how horribly I did not hide <laughs> my unhappiness. And I'm thankful that you said that, but also it's trauma. Is it triggering? It's a bit? triggering because you're reminded, damn, the people in my life knew me as not being happy. It is nothing wrong with that statement and saying it. I'm just trying to give context to the people who say it. Understand that when you say that, it has a double effect. It's a bittersweet feeling that it's a bittersweet feeling to, to hear that somebody sees your happiness. One, because you you like the fact that they see you're happy now, but you're embarrassed of the fact that they've always known that you weren't. Damn. That's all I yeah. want to say on that. Yes. Be yes, careful yes. how you say it to somebody because it really says to them, yo, when you were at your lowest, I could see you. Yeah. And I'd rather. I'd rather not be told that. I'd yes, yes, When people yes. say you look so happy, you got to admit, there's people who know I'm in a relationship now or, or know whatever. They don't say that. They just are happy for you. Yep. The people who say you look so happy, you're like, oh, you one of them ones that knew what I was You knew, to. yeah. That's why yeah. you got to be careful how you even say that. I don't even say that term. I would never say, oh, you lost some weight. Yeah, no. No, that means I was big. Don't remind me of the darkness now that I'm in the light. I don't yeah, want to yeah. know about it. So, like, that, that sentence, you look so happy. You know what? I'm so glad you found happy. Now, if I've been there, if, if I was there, yeah, I might tell you that, not trying to trigger you, but so that I can validate what it, the optic is now, knowing what the optics was before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I also don't think I should, you should do that in front of people. Mm -mm. It should be an intimate, we both drinking, I don't got a little tipsy. Yeah. You know what? I'm telling the truth right now. You have. I love the fact that you're happy. Like I could tell you on this podcast that I'm happy that you're happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, it is triggering. It is like, thanks for remind now. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. It, it, it is like a double edged thing. And I'm glad you're happy. It's definitely different from you look happy. Look is the oh, triggering. Because yeah. mm -hmm. what did I look like before? You was fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got cool. one course of that. Kind of two. Okay. All right, but the first one is this. Your kid is at the park, right? Yeah. There's a birthday party happening over there. You got a three or four-year-old. Birthday party happening right over there, right? Your kid is running around playing kings and queens or cops and robbers or tag or whoever with the other little kids in the birthday party, Yeah. right? They inviting your kid. Come on, whoever. They're the major kid, a main character in the little story. The mom comes and says, come on, kids. Let's, uh... Do the cupcakes. Your kid came to the park with you. There was a birthday party already happening that he joined. Joint. Yeah. So your kid goes with the other kids to the, to the birthday party. And the mom says, oh, I'm sorry. No, you, we didn't, um, I'm sorry. Or whatever. That's what the lady said. I'm sorry. Where's your parent? And the lady, the kid came back to his parent and was like, I, they were having it. First of all. Love the emotional stability of the child. The child came back and said, oh, they were having a birthday party, but they just went for cupcakes. I'm just waiting for them to come back. And so the dad's like, 
Okay, so so now I would ask you. Yeah. Your kid comes back and says, "Oh, they were having a birthday party," so like I couldn't. I, I was just I was waiting for him to come back. They they're, they're doing like the cake and stuff. I'm just waiting for, for us to finish. Cause think about it, you at the park, you on your phone, you yeah. expecting your kid to stay out there playing, but they come and say that. What what's the next thing you do? They might not have had it in their budget for him to. He doesn't. I was he was lucky to even be accepted into that party. They could have said nah. They don't know you. You at a public playground. Oh, it's a public playground. It's a public playground. It was just a birthday party happening at the pavilion right next to where the kids were playing. I understand that he might not. He he he's lucky to have those people there to, to be. A, I'm glad they made him a part of the party. I'm glad that they were didn't exclude him and he felt like he had somebody. But when it's time for cupcakes. They might not. Have, they might have bought cupcakes for every specific kid, and you might not have been one of them. And it's totally fine that you didn't get a cupcake. If they said you can't play with us, that'd be different. How do you feel? This nigga said, "Don't tell me that you think that he should get a free cupcake." Ain't that to me? There's no justifying that. My child is good enough to play with y'all kids out here. Y'all see him out there, and he's playing with y'all kid. He can't have a cupcake. So you bought one cupcake specifically for every child out here? One, two, three, four, five, sixteen motherfuckers. You only bought sixteen cupcakes. How many cupcakes did you buy? Because this is what I do as a parent. I'm gonna go up to the mom and say, "Hey, mama, let me uh, talk to you real quick." You seen crew out there playing with Thea? My son right here. He's the one right here. He was out there with the kids. Is there any way he could have one of those cupcakes? And if you tell me no, like I feel like me asking, she would say yes. Because there's one thing that you got to think about. My kid could have an allergy or something. Yeah. And she could have said, I don't want to give you a cupcake because that's a different thing. Yeah. Also, don't give my child a cupcake without me. There's also that. Yeah. Because I don't know what could be in it. You don't know if he has an egg allergy or peanut oil or whatever y'all use. But I would go and say, yo, he couldn't have one of those cupcakes. Nine times out of ten, she's going to say, oh, yeah, we didn't know who his parent was. Sure. Right. Right, there we go. And I'm a, now you could get a cupcake. If you tell me no, oh, no, we, whatever. Now I got to go to the food. Me and my girl were talking about this. We're going to go to the food line. We're going to buy a big-ass cake. We're going to bring it right back to the park. And we're going to cut a big-ass slice. And we're going to eat it right in front of them. And we're going to make it seem like it's the best fucking cake ever. I'm thinking about K-Man. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, this shit make you feel like tell you him. Shit. Look, tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> tell him no. Tell him no. Uh, why are my eyes watering? <laughs> um, I would never do that to a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we got cupcakes, I can never say, "Oh, nah, you can't have no cupcakes." Oh, or oh no, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, "Where's his parent?" Before we do this, but low key, I don't have it in my heart to be like, "Nah, nah." Yeah. I would 100%, no three, way. Three or four year old, I 100% would say, hey, where's mommy or daddy? Where's, who's, who you here with? And then when they say, my mommy's right over there, I'm gonna be like, hey, we're doing cupcakes. Is he good? Is we good? Is he good? Because yeah. I don't wanna fuck up nobody. You, that, people have allergies, you don't wanna be responsible for that. No way. But I'm 100% gonna do that. I'm 100% gonna do that. I'm just thinking about K Man if he came back to me and said, yo, Unc, they said that I couldn't get a cupcake. Now we have to go and get 16 cupcakes. So now we're literally going to go and get the best cupcake in the, in the world, Georgetown cupcake. <laughs> you ever heard of that? Nah, for real. I'm driving 50 minutes in traffic for this fucking cupcake. Cause Tell you, no man. way. Well, look, I got a separate one right here, right? It says, my girl has a three-year-old. I he, Sorry for the kid shit. Y'all know people be, I guess because hey, look, I have a kid. He's evolving. He's evolving. <laughs> Let's go. My girl has a three-year-old, and she says she still gets her son's father, Father's Day gifts, and he gets her Mother's Day gifts. I don't know how I feel about that because the gifts are kind of personal. I said, ooh. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Think about it. But if he is an active father in that kid's life, I don't have a problem with her getting him a gift. That is a very tough situation. It really depends on how your lady moves around her baby daddy. If the, if the relationship is respectable, then the gift would be respectable. Yeah. If you don't trust the relationship outside of the Father's Day, mm -hmm. then on Father's right. Day, that gives you a reason to be like, uh, yeah. I'm putting myself in that situation. If he's, a, like you said, if he's an active father, then I would expect you to probably buy him something that would also be from the kids. It might be a little personal because you know him, 
But I would expect it to be like, yo, happy Father's Day. From the kids. From the kids. Even if it is from you. Like if let's say the girl wants to get him a gift because he's a good father and she wants to get him something specific. My only question is how does he move around you as the new man? Does he respect you as a man? Right. Is he the type of like, yo, what's That's up? That's my thing. Like, does he respect you? Because Or is he still trying to slam his baby mom? Exactly. Cause then and any chance that you go somewhere. Exactly. Cause then I would have an issue. Then I would have an issue. That's why I said the golden question to ask is how does does he respect you? Because if Brian's right. cool, you know, we've seen a bunch of co-parenting situations. If if he respects you, if he's like, yo, it's good to see you, man. Hey, yo, appreciate you for taking care of my kids. Yo, I might get the nigga a gift. I might <laughs> get him a gift. Hey, look, I'm going to say, yo, get him a gift. He is an act. I'm the, I'm, I'm the type to encourage exactly. that. But she has to instill trust in me. Yes. Feel me? Mm-hmm. It ain't just, oh, well, he's the father of my kid. I don't give a fuck. If that nigga still trying to slam you, that's not just the father of your kid. That is a big problem in our relationship. Right. You getting this nigga some beat studio. That's what I'm saying. You want to get this nigga some Dre beats? Right. Please. You want to get this nigga these uh, JVCs? <laughs> Here you go, bruh. She told me give it to you. Didn't have time to wrap it. <laughs> Where's Junior? All right. Can you imagine working with JVC and you hear that? Oh, damn. <laughs> well, we really got some great ones on the top of our top line. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, okay. look. Movie suggests. Movie suggests. My movie suggestion of the week is... Um, the After Hours, After Hours Till Dawn tour is on HBO Max. It's the weekend. My oh, girl's wow. A, my girl's favorite artist is The weekend. But watching that after going to that Drake concert, the only reason why this is my movie suggestion of the week is because, first of all, The weekend just put on the biggest tour of just past Michael Jackson, whatever. Like, just past his idol. Like, he's doing the Mike Jack shit. You seen the motherfuckers outside the hotel he was staying at. <laughs> yeah. The niggas ain't not having that. But, um... That concert experience. Yeah. Oh, my God. Bro. You, you, I'm actually going to watch that. What is that on HBO Max? HBO Max. He is in 3D. Mm-hmm. Oh, like he that. did that joint. Oh, my God. Then it goes to the hills. That shit is so fire. Now, let me tell you this. Only reason why that's my movie suggestion of the week, y'all, is because we just went to the Drizzy concert, and I want y'all to see the difference in, like, the level of, like, all right, bet. And did you see people in the comments saying that they agreed with you about the Drake concert? Some of the people that went said they felt the same way. Oh, for real? Yeah. I'll say this. It felt like a Drake Lifetime Achievement BET Award performance. Yeah. It felt like you was at the BET Awards and he going to do some of his hits. Yeah. I was just listening to uh, Into Deep in the truck. Yeah. And I'm like, why did we not get there? Why did we you not do get that with so many Drake songs? I, I mean, yeah, but like. I feel you though. Why you didn't do Connect? Somewhere between I wanted and I got it. What what song is that? Somewhere between, between I'm sober, sober and I'm lifted, lifted. but I, I stay down. down, girl, you know I stay down. down. Get down, never lay down. down. Promise I still break everybody. Now they stay down. That's my that's connect. That's the beginning of it. No, is no. It? Uh, you know I'm you mobbing on love. Look, all the Drake fans are like, it's this. <laughs> oh no, no, nothing. Well, you might feel like nothing was the same. I still been drinking on the low, mobbing on the low, swerving on the low. What's the name of that song? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, keep going. Uh, Sorry, the, the, the Drake fans. Wait, wait, don't say it. Uh, furthest thing from perfect. Like every furthest thing. Furthest thing. We didn't get Here that. We go. Why oh, we didn't get that? Oh yeah. Why we didn't get that? Damn. Oh my God, that's one of the best songs. Got the goosey. <laughs> Anytime a song hit me, I yeah. still man. <laughs> hey, look. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, look. That was my movie suggestion of the week. Weekend. It's a dope concert. Um. Yeah, it'll make you appreciate the weekend as an artist more. You should definitely watch it. You should definitely watch it. I'm definitely gonna watch that because his last album was one of my favorites, Don FM. So turn up for sure. <laughs> Don to FM. <laughs> Don to <laughs> FM. <laughs> uh, my movie suggestion of the week is The Truman Show. It's on Netflix. I want you to imagine your life has been a movie for 30 years, and then you find out. Is that a uh, like? Is that a camera? Uh huh. Me and my girl watched that in in Seattle, and I had such a life moving experience with that. I'm uh-huh. like, damn, low key. When you talk about people who think their life is a simulation, or they think this is all a simulation and this is all just made up, what if it is made up? Uh huh. What if it is you that is the director of this movie that you living in? Yeah. You know how they say it's crazy how God work. Everybody has their own connection to God and why God is real. You know. This is blasphemous, what I'm about to say. But what if it's you? What if it's somebody else that is manufacturing your life 
You ever feel like something, certain shit happened? You say, damn, I felt like I seen this before. Yes. Or damn, I feel like this shit was just too perfect. Like they say, stories always have these intricate details. Everybody's life has intricate details you would never be- believe. But when I was young, I always wanted this. And then when I got older, this happened. Or people talk about manifestation and how whatever you put your mind to, you can do. I just watched Kanye West say, the, the, the world is your oyster. Anything you want, you can get. What if there's a reason behind that? What if it ain't just a coincidence or you know, it I don't ain't just a... I don't believe you know? in coincidence at all. What if there is somebody up there that is painting the picture so perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say. Truman Show is great. Jim Truman Carrey Show is great. It is a Jim Carrey classic. I always say this. This, to me, is the movie that made Jim Carrey go like this. You know, Jim Carrey started not nah, really yeah. fucking with the comedy thing anymore. Yeah. I done already did three Ace Venturas. Already did Liar Liar. I done already did... The Cable uh, Guy. Mm-hmm. Cable Guy. I've the already mask, done all of it. The mask. I've already mm-hmm. done all of this comedy shit. Once he, this movie, I think, was done in '98, right before he started getting into his real like I right, like I'm gonna now, do some more did stuff. Some, he did, did some stuff. He did but, some great stuff after. But you have that conversation. You know, you have a conversation with Jim Carrey, and, and it's crazy. You look at the fact that he did Bruce Almighty different, right? Like, yeah, he looks at the whole shit different. Yeah, I was literally in a movie where I got the keys. Even yeah. though it's a movie, uh huh. It's crazy that, uh, it's crazy how you know, like, the life's intricate details. Mine was The Weeknd, Dawn FM. You just said Dawn FM was my favorite album. And then now you got Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey narrated the whole shit about life and the afterlife. <laughs> Look at the goosebumps on the nigga. <laughs> You're not lying. Yeah. And we did not tell each other what our movie suggestion was. You had no idea what mine was. I had no idea what I yours totally was. forgot that Jim Carrey is on the end of Dawn FM. He's in the whole thing. I literally just watched the whole movie. I was all the way 3,000 miles away. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> no. Do you know that there is an actual Truman Syndrome, a medical diagnosis now because of that movie? And the, and the director, they said the director loves that because you can't tell me shit. Yeah. <laughs> but people really started to believe after seeing that movie that their movie was that way. I mean, that their life was that way. I'm about to rewatch that joint. Bro, I rewatched it and I was like, I ain't gonna lie, I hadn't seen it since I was young. So my girl's like, You seen this, right? And I'm like, Yeah, I seen this. Just a couple, you know, I seen it when I was young. Uh huh. And she saw, she was sitting there watching me look at it because I'm sitting there like, Oh shit. Oh shit. Because they do stuff like, uh, every time something happened to him, everybody look at him. You get a lot of people took from that movie mm-hmm. that we've seen. But like, when stuff would happen to, <laughs> Uh, around him or with him, people look like, and it's like, damn, his life is like a movie. Mm-hmm. Think about how often you're not looking at everybody. Yep. You drop your wallet or something, and you got people that look up at you and they look down. Are they act? Are they an actor? Nah, yeah. Are it's you like, supposed to be here? You know, Nolan took from that for Inception with the the whole oh. my dream is collapsing situation. That's exactly what like, it reminded me of. When you start panicking. Everybody look at you because now you altering that you starting to figure this shit out that it's a dream. That it's a dream. If y'all never seen Inception, that is the best mo- one of the best movies of all time. It's my favorite movie of all time. Let's end the podcast look, before we bring up some other, something. Favorite movie of all time is Inception. That's not that's not true. My favorite movie of all time is Inception. One hundred percent, thousand percent. It's it's definitely in my top five, but my top five changed like Quentin Tarantino's top five. Quentin yeah. Tarantino will sit there and watch fucking Beetlejuice and be like, Beetlejuice is in my top five. Did you just watch it? Nah, yeah. This man's top five has changed a million times. I was thinking about how when he went up on the stage to win the uh, the award for whatever. The Oscar? No, he did the uh, interview and he was like, it's fucking Brad's year. Not fucking Mark's year. Okay, yeah. He will come out and be <laughs> like, this motherfucker shouldn't have won. <laughs> Son, <laughs> one, literally one of the best in the industry. But what? that's going to be it for 163. Where is the drop? Damn. That's it for 163, y'all. Shout out to the Leo. Leo squad is out there celebrating y'all birthday. Enjoy it while y'all got some heat. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to see Oppenheimer tomorrow, tonight. It's Friday. I'm going to see Oppenheimer, so I will have a little review. That's what's up. Might stop by my favorite mics. I hear it. Y'all stay safe this time.